Welcome everybody back to the debrief. We're here after a bit of a break since uh, since Vale, and we're in a new season. We got lead climbing going on. John, how you been? I've been good. We got new. Uh, we, we look new too with the. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a friend of mine uh, from like grade five, Chris Cotes, and he does this like um, he does concept art for like the sci-fi industry it's really cool uh if, if you check him out his link is in the very side of the uh in the side of the overlay but he does all this cool stuff this is like peanuts for him he just threw this together probably in like 30 minutes but anyway he gave us a nice little graphical new home and we're just blatantly stealing ifsc colors so well, well borrowing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> paying, paying homage to the ifsc that's that's, that's it yeah it's a tribute it's a yeah. tribute how about, right. have you been in the last little while you guys had fourth of july down there congratulations fireworks barbecue all that kind of stuff thank you good yeah, work on the was, freedom uh, yep, yep it was, it was a, a nice holiday here it's been really hot here yeah. um kind of everywhere i'm sure you've been hot up there too it's yep. uh just like Fahrenheit wise, it's into the you know the 90s and just uh, a lot of whatever the, 90 degrees is. I got right? no idea, man. <laughs> well, it's hot, and uh, even when the you know the gyms turn on air condition, it's still just like ugh, it's you know. Yeah. But whatever, no complaints. It's been great. It's I, I've missed these discussions though about the the World Cup circuit, so it's good to be back. Yeah, everything else has been on Instagram. It feels like it's just like you know. Well, there hasn't been that much to talk about. There's been a few events, but anyways, yeah. Um, yeah, from my end, like, just had a birthday, so I didn't get to watch as much of this as I wanted to. Like, I watched finals, and then I watched semis this morning, just trying to, like, digest it. And, like, maybe the headline for this event, if you haven't watched the event yet, is maybe just don't watch finals. Maybe just watch the semifinals. Semifinals were really good. I thought they were great. They, like, had so much more story. There was more going on. Uh, finals were a bit of a, a little bit of a bummer for the lead climbing, but um, I don't know. Do you want to start there? Do we want to start on the lead stuff? Well, I'll tell you that I think, I think the big storyline for me, if you want to look at it really broadly, broadly the big thing that, that I take away from this this weekend at Villars was it, it, we, we can, can now officially, officially it's, it's not journalistically irresponsible to start speculating on whether or not Yanya can sweep the lead season, yeah, right? Sure. Because we we kind of held we held back on that at the end of the bouldering season because while it was fun to think about it, it was like, well, we haven't even had one competition yet for the league season so we don't want to get ahead of ourselves but uh she she in case i don't know anybody stumbles on this show and has not read the results or whatever uh she won villars so she's won the first lead competition of the of the 2019 season uh so we'll see we'll see if she can keep going uh, and, and, and sweep, sweep the lead season just, just like she swept, swept the, the bouldering, bouldering season. season. Yeah, I like that's something that obviously after seeing it happen in bouldering, it certainly makes it feel more possible. Um, what was fun from this event is seeing a couple talents come up, some young talents that it's, it's hard to say over a course of really just four routes. Uh, it's hard to say if somebody really gave one of the greatest to run for their money. Uh, but the, the one that got the most attention from, at least for myself, was Che Hyun Seo from Korea because uh, she had like, she had fine results in qualifiers. I think she was in the top eight. I think she was seventh or eighth or something like that. Uh, but then in semifinals, she completely broke away and ended up scoring one of the highest scores in semis. Uh, yeah, she she basically set high point until Yanya topped it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and almost by far, like Che Hyun and then Ai Mori from Japan were the only ones that kind of came within five moves of, uh, of Yanya. Uh, this whole event, the speed stuff and the lead stuff, had all these stories coming out of Korea. Um, so for one, uh, in speed and men's speed, they had uh, a South Korean guy make it into the finals in seventh or eighth. <laughs> I think uh, Seung Bam Lee. I mm -hmm. think he set a personal best uh, in the in the qualifying round as well. And then you have the story of Jane Kim getting injured in the qualifiers, and she had to sit out of semifinals. I from my understanding from her Instagram was that it was one of her fingers, but maybe I think you mentioned that you might have heard it was a wrist or something. Uh, but then of course her falling out, but then this other young Korean born 2003, like first year of eligibility comes up and looks incredible in semifinals. Uh, so I just wanted to ask you about this because you put out there on, I think it was Twitter or Instagram, you know, people in the stream haven't heard of this person before. It is her first time in an IFSC world cup. She claims a silver medal. Uh, 
but she doesn't have much of a record for a lot of us out here in uh, in comp climbing. But you've written about her before, so can you like give us some background on this climber? Sure. Yeah, I interviewed her for a, a, an article in Climbing Magazine last year. I think it's called the Korean Crusher or something like that. I'm sure it'd be pretty easy for people to Google and find. Uh, she. So, so she she, um, she has, has kind, kind of all of the, the, the foundation, foundation, the makings of being a great, great climber, because, because her father actually owns a climbing gym, gym in, in, in South, South Korea, Korea, and, and so, so she has quite, quite literally grown, grown up climbing, climbing there. there. Uh, uh, a lot, lot of her success, success thus far has been on uh, outdoors. outdoors. She travels every, every – it's kind of cool, every, every year – her father uh, uh, takes, takes her, her and a, and a couple other Korean climbers, climbers to kind of, kind of famous, famous outdoor, outdoor uh, crags, crags to do like, like a, a summer, summer climbing, climbing trip or something, or something like that. that. So, so they've been to like Greece. Greece. I think they've been to the Red River Gorge. Gorge. Um, and, and so in the process of that, she's climbed um, a couple of pretty landmark climbs, Bad Girls Club and, and stuff. She's, she's, she's a 514D climber outdoors. Um, That's incredible. At age, at age 14, then 15 now. Uh, so she, and, she, and she's been decorated on the Korean kind of competition scene there for, for a while. So uh, this was her first adult World Cup competition, and she obviously did, did incredibly well, but she didn't, she certainly didn't come out of nowhere. Uh, anybody that has been familiar with not only the Korea scene, but kind of the Asia scene, the Asia World, the Asia Cup and all that, um, she's been, she's been a pretty big name for a little bit now. I don't have it open, but I think when I was looking at her uh, IFSC record, it looks like she hasn't even been to a Youth World Championship before like not even as a b class again if this is her first year of eligibility that means she's at the start of her a career so she would have only had her b career two years in b to to be at a world championship but i think this is her first like outside of asia uh ifsc event that's a huge deal like it's i, I don't know it when you were getting to interview her it seems like most of the angle at that time was obviously her outdoor excess or uh, success it's very hard to gauge a child's, you know, strength on an international scene when they're so young. But did you guys talk too much about the the competition angle of things? She she mentioned to me that she was she wanted to do more competitions. Um, but prior to really this year, her focus has been outdoor routes. She she admitted to me that she idolizes Margot Hayes, um, and so she was wanting to do like her next something that she's kind of eyeing would be doing La Rambla uh, outdoors. Um, so her focus has just been kind of outdoor climbing. So, um, so I think that this kind of was a little surprising uh, it, to me that she, she kind of made such a big, such a big leap so suddenly, but she did admit that she was kind of considering, um, doing the competition thing. Again, this was a year ago that I interviewed her. So, um, obviously, obviously she's kind of become set on competition since we talked. So. Sure. Yeah, totally. No, anyway. And, she, that was... and she's a, I should mention, she's a black diamond. She's sponsored by black diamond. Um, and Black Diamond has a big office in Korea. Um, and so that, that and when I interviewed her, she was sponsored by Black Diamond. So that just kind of illustrates that she's been around for a while. Like she's been sponsored by Black Diamond for years and stuff. Yeah, that's that's fair. Like, I mean, I, at the same time, I think you and I both understand, like, you know, a big brand will probably sponsor a fairly large roster from the very top down to like kind of grassroots levels. Um, hopefully it's a performance like this gets her even more support. That would be really cool. And, and if he, if she hasn't, I'm just going to double check to see if, uh, to see if she has spent uh, time at other international comps, but if she hasn't, and if it turns out that it was a financial issue, you kind of hope that somebody will get behind her. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, the only other results I have for her are from uh, the Eighth Asian Youth Championships. That's it. And, and, I'll, and I'll say, say this, this, it's kind of funny because when, when I was when I was living in South Korea years ago, I, I, remember, I remember it's kind of funny to think about this now, but I remember thinking that Jiayin Kim was getting a little old, and this was like sure. five five years ago, and she's still on the scene and still crushing. But I remember kind of wondering, like, oh, I wonder. Because, you know, you're there, it's a small climbing community, so you kind of, when I was living there, you kind of cheer for the Korean climbers. Um, and so I was wondering, like, well, when Jiayin Kim, now that she's getting a little older, if she decides to retire or if her, her results kind of slow down a little bit, who's going to be next? Is there anybody next? And then, lo and behold, that was right around the time that Jong Won Chan kind of came to prominence. Yeah. Probably, no, 2016, 2017, right around there. Um, and then... 
I think he was and like 2014, if I remember. 2014, yeah. Because yeah. he had the blonde hair like back in the day that's when he was like right, a kid. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so then he was on top of the circuit for a while, and he was kind of getting all the headlines as the as the the big Korean climber. Um, and then, as we've talked about in the, this past bouldering season and last year, his results are kind of uh, maybe not as as ideal as they were, not not as not where he would want them. And so I was kind of starting to wonder, like, well, is there another Korean climber who's going to rise? And I was thinking maybe it'd be Solsa, uh, but now it's. Che Hyun So, and, and so, so it's, it's just like, like Korea has, has this remarkable ability to just, um, whenever, whenever one, one climber slows, slows down, down, there's always another one that's that's, that's just, just kind of kind assuming, assuming the mantle. mantle. It's really, really cool. cool. Just while we're on the topic of of Korean climbers, just for like my own clarification, because when I start dealing with Asian names, I do get confused as to whether the surname or the given name goes first, and also if it matters at all. Like, is it at the point where most like like most Asian climbers don't really care if if you have it in the correct order, because if I if I remember right, in Korean the family name is is spoken first, right? Yes, yes correct. correct. So Jane Kim, Jane is her given name. Kim is her family name, but normally she'd be referred to as like Kim Jane, right? Yes. Yeah, so in Korea, okay. so her so her name so Jane is just like the the sort of westernized name that she's taken. Her name is Kim Ja In. Okay. And so and and it's and so when she uh, spells that with American characters, she spells it. You know, K I M J A I N. Yeah. So in in you know when when we're looking at it in English, J I J A I N doesn't spell Jain, it spells Jane. Right. And so that's kind of why she took that that name. But yeah, in Korea she would be Kim Jain. Okay. So the, the family name would come first. And is that something that they uh, like for myself? If I you know I've only emceed for a World Cup once, but is that something that uh, that they would like you know? Aside from obviously, it's more respectful to, to say somebody's name the way they want. Is that something that's kind of fallen by the wayside when you're on an international scale with like English speakers? You know, it's hard to say. I I, I would I would find it really hard to believe that any of the Korean climbers would would be like offended or anything like sure. that. I mean, most of them have have been in. If not competing internationally, they've been with international competitors enough that they kind of know that, that that English and Korean are different and whatnot. So I, I wouldn't think they would really care. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about, I want to talk about Miho Nanaka really quick. Um, how did her results from this weekend strike you? Because for me, I she ended up in finals in speed, which like is a surprise no, I don't want to. Yeah, it is a surprise by itself. But like, I think she what finished in tenth overall, which is huge. But in lead, she only finished in like what near twentieth, eighteenth. Mm -hmm. Trying to find this. Anyway, I just thought that was like that was kind of not what I expected. It was a little bit backwards. It was it was a cool surprise, and it's the kind of results that you feel like will will nudge her towards being a front runner for a, a combined event. Yeah, I was really, yeah, I was really impressed, impressed with her, her speed. speed. Uh, I. I I just, I just maybe, maybe I'd, I'd seen it on Instagram, Instagram a little bit, but I didn't really know that she was training speed that hard, like, like more than just kind of the average climber mm -hmm. that's that's vying for the Olympics. Uh, you have to think though, with a tenth, she she finished tenth in speed, and we obviously know she's a she's a one of the best boulders. Um, you have to think that she has now really risen to the top of the Japanese, the women's team for the Olympic selection, uh, which which is big news because for a long time you and I were saying, how in the world is Japan going to whittle down this incredible surplus of competitors to pick only two men and only two women? Um, it was kind of just like a, a pick them for anybody. Uh, I think with this, pras with this past weekend in Villars, you have, you have to put Miho at the very top as, as the number, number one most, most likely to, to qualify for the Olympics for Japan, for the women. I don't know, though, because, like, Akio did very well in lead. And, like, again, it's just the first event of of the lead season. Yeah. I still think I put Akio towards the top just on the possibility that, like, she has a record as being somebody that could medal in lead and obviously somebody that medals a lot in bouldering. I think, I think mm -hmm. she's... It's like it is hard to say, but I, I think for the Japanese women, you still have all those young climbers coming up that we saw in in like finals uh, this weekend. But yeah, I don't know if I'd put her at the very front. I think she's as high up as as I thought before. I was just really stunned by by the speed result, and I kind of look at it again. And uh, well, 
the issue of, of falls in the speed event this weekend was was another big one. I know that's something you want to talk about. And kind of looking at the list, there's a bunch of names that didn't make it into finals that normally would have. Like Ari Sasanti Raheyu from Indonesia is somebody we talk about. Elena Timofeeva is also like way down there. And while I don't haven't seen video of any of this stuff, you have to assume that's probably due to weird slips and bad falls. You wouldn't normally have times like that if you uh, – if you had climbed it, you know, cleanly to the top. So maybe it's one of those instances where her result doesn't reflect her strength so much as it does just, it was a, like a, a slippery weekend for everybody. As if anybody's seen like Shauna's Instagram stuff, just talking about how like just dry firing off everything, the footholds were rough. Like the sun on that wall apparently was, was really difficult for some parts of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Mike Langley on commentary said at some point, I think it was during the lead semis or the finals that he said his phone actually stop stopped working, working because it was so hot. <laughs> uh, uh, so, that so that just gives you kind of an indication of, of how, how hot it was and probably how bad the friction was in a lot of cases for, for, for some of that. Um, yeah, yeah, it was kind of a disappointing weekend, weekend for speed, at least in the kind of the, the final, final heats, heats. Uh, because, I'm because I'm looking at, at if you look at the results, um, it was, was Anna Jobert versus Yiling Song in the final run, and Yiling Song slipped. And, 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 and so, so Anik won. won. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, here we go. go. Um, I was so excited for this race. Oh, and it, when, when, when nobody, nobody slips, slips, when neither competitor slips, slips it, is it is so, so exciting, exciting to watch, to watch a, a, an elite, elite speed climbing heat. Yeah. It really is a lot of fun. But like, right, ah. Uh, yeah, you know, break. And she was, was so was, ahead, so far she ahead. She was so ahead. And, uh, and then, I don't know if you have the men's, but um, Dimitri Timofeev, um, I'm looking at the results here. Do you want the final or the small final? Well, in the final, I think we'll do the men. We'll do the men final first because it's like the final, and then we'll go yeah. to the, the. But yeah, this is uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, Alexander Shikov and Dmitry Timofeev. And this was this was my best race because this was like this was a clean race until literally the very last side. Look how good, like unreal. And then on the right side, just slips off the left foot push. Yeah, it's almost like they're for uh, until the very end. They're like, I mean, they're wearing the same jersey. You know, it's like they're mirror images of each other. Yeah, it was a great um, race. I love that one. But it, but it's we've talked about this before. The frustration of watching speed climbing because you're essentially just watching a game of of slips, and it's it's really hard to compare it to any other sport. You know, like when you're watching track and field or something. You don't expect, like, half, half the field to fall. I guess maybe sure. if it's a hur hurdles or something, sometimes that happens. Um, can't remember the, the last only... time I watched hurdles. I have no idea what the failure rate is for that. But <laughs> the, the only comparison I have is kind of like maybe figure skating or something when they're trying all the, the jumps and stuff and they, they fall sometimes when they, they don't stick to landing. Yeah. But I feel like even at elite level, like Olympic, like Olympic level figure skating, you don't get anywhere near the number of falls that you do on an elite level speed climbing I, th I think that's a really good parallel in terms of how it feels as a spectator, right? Because, uh, well, I, I don't know if the States has some big figure skating names, but Canada has some really big figure skating yep. names. So the last bunch of Olympics and World Championships, it's often something that's just on Canadian TV is watching Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer and the, like the full body heartbreak when you see incredibly talented people like whiff on ice hurts a lot, but it is very rare, but it's like a, it's a really strong and painful emotion as a spectator. And you get that constantly in speed climbing, especially if you, if, especially if you're uh, passionate about one of the climbers, um, this is like the biggest clown fiesta of a speed race. Where do I have it? This was the bronze medal race. This was, Jan Chris from Czechia and Basama went from France. And this is just like absurd. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you can hear the commentators over this, but anyway, slips, big slip, another big slip. And then. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like. like it's like how much drama, how much back and forth can you pack into like a seven second race, you know? Yeah. Um, how many lead changes? And, and, and. and I think, I think Bossa, Bossa, if I remember correctly, in the heat right before that, he was uh, running against Reza, and Reza slipped. Right? Yeah, Reza, that... Reza was out on. Oh, sorry, Reza went out on a false start in the quarterfinal uh -huh. against Bossa. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay but, but but it was nonetheless it was not a fall, but it yeah, was like a, another annoying like a, a sort of a fluke. Mm -hmm. um, it just makes speed a really weird 
game to watch. <laughs> and then, that's the, that's the hard thing is because like I've gone through the phase of like I thought speed was dumb as hell like six years ago, and then as I got to watch more of it, and then as it became part of this combined thing, everybody's appreciation has grown for it. Like speed is so much bigger. But the longer I watch it, and the more you have events like this, you're like, man, this like this part really hurts. When it's a great event, it's amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. And when it hurts, it like it hurts pretty hard. It's like the, the the different stages of speed acceptance, speed, speed fandom. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, although nowadays, I know from coaching kids, there are kids that get into climbing, and the first thing they do is speed. But for, for at least for people like our generation, you know, nobody started climbing with speed first. It's kind of like everybody sort of um, came into it later. In our case, a lot later because we were sort of not forced to like it, but it was ushered to us as part of this Olympic package. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah, it's, it's like, like you get really into it. it. You're like, like okay, okay, this, this isn't that bad. bad. This is this is exciting. It's it's, it's fast. Um, anything, anything can happen. happen. But then, then it's, it's just like to have the men's final, final in this case end in, in a fall, fall uh, or, or with, with a fall, fall and the and women's, women's final, final to end with a fall. I don't know. It was disappointing. How would you feel? And not to not to say necessary because I wasn't there, but not to say that like um, weather was the reason that so much of this falling happened although a lot of athletes did say in lead at least that it caused some issues what would what would you say if i if i like became the president of the ifsc and i mandated that all world cup events have to take place indoors hmm uh that is a really interesting idea i i would not be opposed to it i think that at, if if our sport continues to grow um I would, I would think, think that, that that is the arc, arc that we are, that we are heading, heading towards, towards because um, um, if, if you, you look, look at, at other sports, sports and, I and I know we always do this, we like, like bring in these other sports, sports but if you, you look at like American football, football, if you look at, um, it, it, there's, there's something, something there's something to be said for performing your best when it can be, when all the climate conditions and the friction conditions and whatnot can be controlled. And that, I think that's, partially why you see a lot of professional athletes preferring to play indoors because because outdoors while it while it's exciting and it's a different atmosphere there is this kind of unknown factor with the weather with the temperature um i would be fine with that to be honest if you would want to make that mandate i uh, think i mean not to be that obviously there would there are some really cool walls i'm thinking of like the wall at innsbruck and stuff these outdoor sure. walls it'd yeah. be a bummer not to compete there we're just going to kind of put that aside for the second uh in and of itself the idea of like having these all these events controlled climate controlled and whatnot indoors i think it makes sense yeah it's like i i I love the romance of the outdoor walls. Like Villars is one of those towns. Chamonix is obviously one of those towns. Um, vale, not so much because like a ski resort in the summer just looks like a muddy hill. Uh, but yeah, you get those like, incredible venues outside. Uh, but it sucks when a finals gets rained out. Actually, I have a clip to show you later uh, regarding a rained out finals. Um, it sucks getting rained out. It sucks when the sun is cooking everything. It sucks when climbers at one period of the day are climbing under different conditions than another. Um, mm -hmm. I think it would throw the circuit for a complete loop because you'd have all these organizers who are depending on cheap rentable real estate to host their event like a public square or in terms of Villars is literally held in a parking lot. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to find a venue for this stuff, right? Especially yeah, a yeah. venue tall enough to host a uh, rope event. But long term, if the money's there, it should be where it goes because yeah, getting rained out is dumb and like climbing on cooking holds is bullshit. Uh, yeah, that's anyway, that was like a, a crazy, like, you know, little diversion from, uh, from well, work. Well, it's like Magos, Alex Magos, Magos comes out in, in sunglasses to climb. <laughs> that's just too, he, you know, that's if, if, if it's to the point where he's having to climb in sunglasses, which let's take him as he actually needed it as opposed to he was going for style points. Yeah. Like, then we should really think about this because that's not, that's far from ideal climbing conditions if you're having to climb with, with sunglasses. Sure. Um, for, for competition. So, uh, it would, it would, it would, it would be, be a whole, whole logistic, logistical, logistical headache, headache to have to, have to cons I, I, think I think bouldering indoors, indoors would be easier to do than, than, than a lead competition, competition because you need much, much higher, higher ceilings, ceilings for lead, um, 
you can, and I think you're gonna, you would run into trouble having trying to hold a lot of these competitions in gyms, because gyms are just not built for huge World Cup size crowds. Like think back to the competition at Munich, the bouldering competition uh, a month ago or whatever. You can't fit that crowd in a in a gym. Right. right. Yeah, that's so, true. But I can definitely fit that in like a convention hall. I, I can, mean, you know, and there's a few like, especially in North America, where the crowds aren't that big in the first place. Like, again, Vail is a unique situation because that that event is a small part of a much larger outdoor event and entry is free. Um but I think, like, when you look at, like, rope events, like, you look at places like the Old Stone Summit, maybe, even, well, I was going to say the new movement in Denver, but it's actually not that much spectator space. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think I don't know, we should all follow the old Cranj model of just, like, a, a what is it, in a school? Anyway, yeah. that will yeah. we'll leave that until the end of the season. But The, the, the U.S. US nationals, nationals have been held in gyms for years, for years um, or at least indoors. Sometimes yeah. they're in convention, convention centers, centers and whatnot. But like, but like you said, said, it's different because, because the U.S. nationals, nationals are not going to draw the crowd that, that, that like a Munich, Munich World Cup, Cup is going to draw. Yeah. So, so it's kind of apples and oranges, oranges a little yeah. bit. Yeah, totally. Um, okay, uh, let's – I'm just to get me back to like the, the rained out thing, I want to – I'm just going to show a clip. This is a clip put together by uh, Nikki at Beta Root Setting. So if you don't – follow or what's the word subscribe if you don't subscribe to him already make sure you do we have so few subscribers and he has many i'm sure if you're watching this you already watch anyway this is a clip of one of the qualifiers oh is this the semi no it is the semi sorry my bad and so this is on the right side uh yanya is about to climb and this is where she loses her chalk bag and we're just going to show this because this is obviously the talking point of the event Literally in the first couple moves right here, like the ground, you can see the belayer in the corner. Yeah, you can see the belayer just kind of like, uh, what? The, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, kinda, I think the belayer like wanted to call her down, but then really quickly realized like, oh, I can't, like I can't remind her to pick up her chalk bag because she's already started her attempt. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's one of those funny things where you hope everybody knows the rules because you, you obviously can't just like give somebody a chalk bag partway up. I don't think. Actually, I haven't even checked that. Maybe no, maybe it's not covered in the rules. I, that's probably a technical in some regard um but uh anyway yeah so i mean she ends up uh, not doing half a bad job on this climb obviously topping the semi-final not having chalked since the very beginning and the best part is her muscle memory of still <laughs> reaching behind her to try and get she chalked. goes to she goes uh, to chalk up a couple times and you notice that uh, the commentators i think it was kyra condi maybe and uh, mike langley mm -hmm. they didn't notice that she had lost her chalk bag I sure think that, yeah uh, you know, they were, they looking, were looking on monitors, on monitors I, think, I think, and there was some glare, and, and, and uh, obviously just really easy to miss it. Yeah, uh, so, it's not something so, you look for when you're commentating. Like, again, you've been watching climbers climb this all the time. It's not something you're going to notice necessarily. Plus, half the time you're looking at a monitor, right? You're looking at, like, notes or something. Or you know, it's, it's not the kind of thing you can really blame people for looking for. I can only recall one other instance that this has happened in a World Cup, and I'm about to show people that, and it was, like, six years ago. Well, uh, the, the, the funny, the funny thing, thing about, about the commentary, commentary like, like along, along the way, way you, you could see Yanya's Yanya like, she's like chuckling to herself um, because, sure. of, because of the, just the oddity of the situation. Yeah. And, and it's, it's kind, kind of funny, funny because I think Kyra Condi and Mike Langley, Langley interpreted it as, as she was just chuckling, chuckling like, like because she's, she's having, having a good time and like, you know, whatever, crushing the route. And and it's like, well, that's not actually why she was, see, there she's like shaking her head. And I think if I remember correctly, the commentators were like, she's having a good time, you know, she's she's just loving Loving it, and it's like, well, that's yeah, yeah, that's not really why she's kind of smiling to herself. Well, talk about the ultimate stress relief. Like, if you put any pressure on yourself to do well on this climb, and then something happens to you beyond your power that gives you like a huge disadvantage, all of a sudden, doesn't matter how well you do. If you fail, you know, you've got the ultimate get out of jail free card, and you just say like, oh, I didn't have my chalk. It was a crazy hot day. You know, that's that must relax you so much to be like, well, you know. It's out of my hands. If I fail, I've got an excuse. Um, I think that's probably it. Like something that goofy happens to you, you just like instantly just let go to the universe and just see what happens. You're not so concerned anymore. Well, well think, think about, about the flip, flip side. side. What, what if she, she let's, let's just have, have some, some fun, fun and speculate. speculate. What, what if, if she, she would go on and, and, and she wins, wins every, every other competition, competition of the lead season, season but, but she, she fell, fell here because <laughs> no, because of <laughs> lack of chalk. That would be sure. just like the universe conspiring to like, like what a you know what a fluke. So, um, yeah. luckily, luckily she she 
<laughs> climbed it with ease without chalk, which is pretty remarkable. Yeah, no, for real. I think uh, that would that would that would be some some goofy stuff. Uh, since we're watching this, this is like this was the breakout climb for Chai Hyun. Like Yanya was the only woman that topped the semifinal. Um, and this section where Chayun is right now shut down most people. Um, so this is where you really were a breakaway if you managed to get past those two dishes. Um, or do I have this wrong? Am I because there's a few dishes? No, that was it. Yeah, that was the yeah. This, this is the spot where yeah. um, I remember watching Chayun here, and I was like, oh, okay, like this is she's like. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not, not, not to say like she's legit, legit cause we already knew that, that but, but it's, it's like, like, wow, she's, she's I mean, I, 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 I full disclosure, I, I knew she was a great climber. I certainly wouldn't have predicted her in her first World Cup to get second place behind Yanya. You no, know, not at all. This, the whole time I was watching this, my, just like everybody else, my jaw was just kind of, just kind of dropping. Um, it was awesome. Yeah, we might Anytime, I mean, this is, it's a flashback of the first Bouldering World Cup of the season when we had Oceana McKenzie kind of come out at, you know, seeming to come out of nowhere. It's totally. just, it's always fun when you have these, these, uh, these dark horses or whatever you want to call them, um, perform incredibly well. It's great. It's good for the sport and it's good as a spectator to have these little surprises. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a, a really good parallel. And, uh, that's a, actually Maringen of, of, of the Boulder season is kind of a parallel for the, uh, uh, for the women's final as well, uh, which I think we messaged about. We'll just watch this uh, watch this thing finish up. I really enjoyed this wall aside from the aesthetics of it. I'm not a huge fan of like the pixelated coloring and the uh, all the extra colors on the. I don't mind the big volumes and protrusions being one other color, but it was a little a little much for me. It's kind of a small complaint, but it's not my style. I'm a Chamonix guy, just like one color. I, I do think the camera work was pretty, was pretty good, good the whole the whole, the whole time. time there were a couple times sure. when i wish they would pan out a little bit but you kind of get that in every competition i think that overall the camera work was was really spot on for this for this event yeah having that crane up there on the side i think you only really got to use it for uh uh anyway topping libro cup as the first climber without a chalk bag ever yeah that's probably true i want to show you the last time Somebody, Somebody lost, lost their, their chalk bag. bag. I, I cannot, cannot remember, remember who it is. is. Yeah, um, man, was, I got it. I got the got clip okay. ready already. I, I, I want to say, I want to say it was a guy. Am yep. I correct in remembering that? Yep. Um, I, uh, I don't. I don't remember who else. I, beyond that, I can't recall. It was, it was a couple years ago. Though. Yeah. So it's been a while. we're going back to Brianson 2014, and uh, we're gonna watch. On the right-hand side of your screen, Mr. Sachiyama. That's right. That's yeah. right. And just in a second, you'll see it. He's flailing around. Well, there it goes. Chalk bag gone. And so to be clear, like this was the semifinal. He was not one of the first ones out. Like this is pretty early in the round of semis. Um, he notices it right here. <laughs> <laughs> and then he has to start to hustle. Uh, and what's great about this is uh, this semifinal, like they didn't end up doing a finals for this event. And I'm not sure if it's because the original semifinals time was rained out or if because the finals time was rained out. Uh, because of the time of day that you see right here, it makes me think that the original semis was rained out. Um, I didn't go back and watch this. I kind of like scrambled for this video. So if anybody knows, leave it in the comments for sure. Um, yeah. But anyway, because there wasn't a finals, his incredible high point on this climb without a chalk bag won him the event, even without a finals round. Uh, so he did not top it, unfortunately. He got, I think, to the third last hold. Uh, but yeah, this was the last big, uh, big time somebody uh, did a huge performance winning a round uh, without a chalk bag. And he's going to go through a traverse and some other stuff. But uh, yeah, I don't like, what do you think about, about this whole kind of like, first of all, how does this happen at like a World Cup level? Yeah, I am. I, I am as far from a World Cup level competitor as as there could be, and I have never. And 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 I like to buy. If I buy chalk bags, I like to buy cheap chalk bags. Um, I I have never had a chalk bag fall for no reason. Um, I I don't know. It, if I I I don't know. Um, I would hope that Yanya has a little, has a little conversation, conversation with, with her. her if it was if it was a, an, an equipment malfunction, malfunction i hope she has a conversation with her with her, with her you know whoever made the chalk bag um <laughs> yeah. or gets a new chalk bag if uh, yeah i i would be really curious you and i were talking about this before we started recording i never actually heard why her chalk bag fell and i think it's it's 
it's kind of it's funny, funny that we're, that we're, we're like, like diving, diving so deep, deep into that, that instance, instance, but it was, it was a highlight for me of the weekend. weekend. Um, I don't I know, know if it was, was if she had tied, tied it and it came untied. I don't know if it just became unclipped. I don't know if she forgot to clip it maybe, which is possible just in the kind of the nerves of the moment. You just kind of put it around your waist and forget to snap it. I can't imagine that. I like, I don't even know how you do that, how you wrap it around yourself. Anyway, this is my favorite moment right here. Comes down, grabs a chalk bag. Gets a, gets a little bit of applause from the crowd. <laughs> Just a little good photo moment right there. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> anyway, that's, yeah, Sachiyama from Brienson 2014. Hilarious stuff. Uh, yeah, I think, so my best guess is, right, if you have one of those, like, plastic buckles that you, like, you jam the buckle, like, the male end into the female end, it pretty much stays locked. It's pretty hard to, like, wiggle that out or, like, force it to compress and open. I'm thinking it's probably one of those things where you have, like, the fabric loop and then a metal buckle just, like, like latches inside and there's nothing holding it aside from gravity. I, that's my best guess is that you do that. And then maybe when the, the, uh, the belayer is like checking you or something, I don't know, man, but it just, it's such a goofy rare thing to happen. It's surprise. I've never seen that happen. Like in my time working in a gym, like I don't remember the last time I noticed somebody like have their shock bag fall off. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know. And if there is, <clears throat> if there is someday a uh, IFSC museum or something, Yanya can donate that chalk bag to it, and it it, it will have this place in history. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, okay, we got to talk about finals. Unfortunately, like semifinals were awesome. Uh, for well, the the men's semifinal was actually. You know what? Before we go to finals, let's talk about the men's semifinals. So going into, I'm just gonna pull up the uh, the results here so that you guys can see what the men's lead field looked like coming out of qualifier oh is it gonna screw me up and not show me both these things uh damn okay anyway coming out of qualifiers for men it was like a pretty decent field you had like yeah. some of the typical names like Jakob schubert's in there of course you had a bunch of like the the japanese guys that are uh coming over from bouldering and you had sean mccall and you had uh who else was in there like martin stronick uh, uh, Jesse Grouper, American, was in there. Yeah, uh, um, you had Yannick Floey. You had it's like you had a, a good lead field, right? You had like some lead climbers in this field, and then you get to the semifinals, and in the center of the wall, it gets to this very bouldery area, and it like took the lead climbers out of the running for this lead World Cup, and effectively yeah. made it a bouldering final. Uh, when I first saw the results, like I hadn't actually watched semifinals when I first saw the results. I just saw them on the IFSC app. And I made a joke about like, does this mean that boulders are the new master race of lead climbing? But I didn't realize, you know, now that I've seen semis, I realized it was a given to them. Like they basically were given a bouldering sequence through the middle of the route. Yeah. Um, and not to say that affected really the scores at the end, because unfortunately the final route was kind of a flub. Uh, but it was a, an interesting situation and it, I may have been like a little bit bullish on how well the boulders might do for the rest of the season. Cause this might be the one gimme they get where the, the semifinals route was like such a boulder problem for them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I'm, I, I don't know if we'll disagree on this. I'm actually okay with that. I don't mind that, that the route setters give us a route. That's just incredibly bouldery. Um, I feel like if you, you cannot object to that. Just like we said, you can't object to, in Mayringen, in the Bouldering World Cup, you can't object to the route setters throwing a crack on to one of the boulder problems because the fact is, that is climbing. You know, it's, uh, and there's no rules that say you can't have kind of trad style or whatever. And so just like here, there's no rule that says you can't have a bouldery style lead problem. And, um, and so it was, I, I was... It was, it was nice, nice to get, to get some, some kind of unexpected, unexpected names, names, at least as a fan. I'm sure, I'm sure that a lot of the climbers had some heartbreak, heartbreak especially you think of like Jakob Schubert and stuff, and these guys that you, you you almost expect to be in the finals, finals and, they and they just don't, don't make it. Make it. Um, um, but, but, but I was okay, okay with that, that little, little twist. twist. Yeah, I guess I'm, I don't have a problem with, uh, with like bouldery moves in it. I don't think I have a problem with it at all. I just, after seeing it in real life, realizing how intense that section was, was really surprising. Um, and maybe it'll stay up that way. Maybe it changes fundamentally how you train for lead climbing. Like, you know, if, if the, if the old way of thinking of it was boulders are really hard in a short amount of time and lead climbs are really long, but easier, maybe it moves towards the idea that they're both equally difficult and 
one you just have to do more of it like lead climbing just becomes you know rather than one boulder it's just like four or five of them stacked on top of each other i don't know i well, uh, well yeah. Like, because the one thing I'll say is that sequence yeah. was awesome to watch. Like, that was really fun trying to deal with. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to let you talk about it while I try and find the clip of it. Uh, well, I'm just going to say, I know we kind of always try to keep this separation of church and state between the competition scene and, and the outdoor scene, right? Like, because we, you and I both agree that we like them being these completely separate entities. But I will say that that is very clearly where the highest level of outdoor climbing has gone, where it's just, you look at, think about Adam Ander doing silence. Yep. And it's just like, I mean, that is just one incredibly hard bouldery move after another. Um, so that is, so this idea of a lead route just being a, a sort of an extension, an extended bouldering route, bouldering problem, that's kind of where the outdoor uh, routes, routes, I think, I think have, have gone, gone or are going, going as people in the future, in the future get into like, like the, the, the whatever, whatever, like the five sixteens and stuff, stuff um, years, years from now, now I think that's, that's where the outdoors are heading. heading. And, and so, so I think, I think it, it makes sense, sense that, 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 that the competition, competition scene would, would, would follow, follow suit. suit. That's a, a really good point. That's a really fair point. And we talk about, um, you know, how the different areas inspire each other and you start to get some like uh, some, com so I don't want to use the word combined, but some, um, like hybrid events like Seco Block, where it's hard to draw the line between bouldering, speed climbing, and lead climbing, right? Uh, and it's like, who knows where it will end, but maybe there is an argument to say that some of these disciplines will end up kind of merging together in a sense where you take the best of uh, each of them and, and make them cool. Um, I'm going to yeah, switch yeah. over to this. Uh, this is Tomoa on the semifinals. Oh, no, this is finals. Damn, I got the wrong thing. Okay, take it back, take it back, take it back, everybody. I knew this was going to be a shoddy episode. This is what happened. That's all right. See, too much birthday yesterday. Well, I'll say this, that the the semifinals that we're talking about and the finals, they they both on the men's and the women's side, they had this, this frustration. They had this problem where it was just kind of all about this one crux. And the, most, most of the, of the competitors, competitors got either either, either they got, got shut down, down by that crux, crux or they passed it, and then they, they fell at another crux. crux. Actually, you know, and, yeah. Let's just go. Let's go to finals. We're we're talking okay. about finals now because this is this is probably the biggest talking point because most people watch finals, not that many people watch semis. So we might as well talk about this. I'm just gonna throw Tomoa up on the screen because he came out first. He was first ranked coming out of semifinals, um, but by the time he came out, he was confronting a field where. What's up? Well, I thought, thought Meiji came, came out first, first right? right? No, so uh, coming out in first place. He came out oh, last. Okay, he okay, was okay. the top yeah, ranked, yeah. right? Yeah, gotcha, um, gotcha. So he was coming out, whether he knew it or not, to a field where there were already three people that had topped and pretty much everybody else had got to the last hold. Yeah. Um, so anyway, this, this climb was like pretty much a walk in the park for all of the guys. It was kind of fun to watch, although some areas that could have been cruxes, like there were some fairly serious dynamic moves you could throw in there. Um, but everybody was pretty chill. Aside from who was it that slipped on that uh, on that little rail on the side? I can't remember. It was, was it Yuki Hada or something? Yuki Hada, yeah. yeah. His, his score was, was uh, 22, uh, 22, so right. he had the lowest. Yeah. Um, um, but otherwise, the rest of this climb for the men, and this was the first, uh, the men were the first ones to climb in finals. It was a, a pretty chill climb until the very, very end. And like right off the top, the first climber out, Meiji got really high and we started mm -hmm. seeing tops right away. Uh, now, T Tomoa maybe isn't the best one to show because like, I mean, I guess we kind of thought he was going to top it because he came out first, but we had seen other good climbers get so close and fail. And of course, Tomoa ended up falling on, on a foot slip a little bit lower than uh, I'm sure he would have expected. Uh, it's coming up real soon. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's it was, was unfortunate, unfortunate enough that we had three people top the finals route. Megos, yes. uh, Yufei Pan of China, and, and Sasha Lehman, who topped it and ended up winning. winning. But, but but that, that doesn't, doesn't even tell, tell the full story, story because, because even though of those, those people that did not top it, it Meiji and uh, Kokoro, Kokoro Fuji, Fuji and Doman Skofic, they, they fell at the last move. move. Yeah. So it's like they, they almost topped it. They got you know they they were very close. And, and then, then even the people, people that didn't, didn't fall, fall at that, that last move, move um, thinking, thinking of, like, like Tomoa and, and Yuki Hada, they, they had just kind of, like, fluke foot slips. Yeah. Or, or in, in the, the case, case of um, Tomoa, you know, his foot got caught on the rope. 
So it's like... Yeah, neither of them f- stopped because they were tired or because they had run out of energy, right? It was like, it was, yeah. you know, it was a foot slip. Fair so enough, you, but... It, it, it is, it, it's like, it's conceivable to speculate that this very could, well could have been a finals where everybody was either topping or falling on the last move. Yeah. Be- and that's... That's unfortunate. That's, that's a not. Really rough that's, one. That is not what you want. Yeah. Just because this was probably the the highlight, even though it was it was fairly early in the running of this event. Uh, but yeah, Sasha Lehman, young guy. Uh, we saw him in a bowler final or two earlier this season, uh, and uh, and this ends up being his uh, his first lead World Cup win. Yeah, in his in home front, country. In, in the hometown, yeah, man. Very he, uh, cool. Yeah, this was exciting. We He's been on the rise. He got fourth place at Chongqing um, in the bouldering season. So uh, this was not a huge surprise to see him in the finals, although it was, you know, it's great that he won. That was, yeah, this was just always fun whenever the hometown climber wins in their home country or whatever. Uh, yeah, the response from the crowd is is great. Yeah, no, it was a great moment. It was probably the uh, the the top moment of the event for me. Uh, but at the same time, it was tough because there were still more climbers to come. And if he tops it and anyone else tops it, it goes to countbacks and he doesn't win, right? Like he kind of lucked out um, in in the terms that the uh, the folks after him didn't do as well. Yeah, he was one, two, three, four, five. He was sixth, and so after him was Doman and Tamoa. So there were two, still two climbers to go, yeah. um, and uh, and Doman came really close. He was one of those guys that <laughs> fell on the last move. So uh, um, I think he he tried to go. If I remember correctly, he tried to go Doman. I mean, tried to go dynamically to that move, um, and just kind of like couldn't stick it. Mm-hmm. But it was really close. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of, there's a level of excitement to it when it when it's like. We don't, we don't want, want everybody, everybody getting, getting a top. top. No. But, but uh, of course, course, goes without saying. saying. But there, it's, it's like, like this different kind of excitement when a competitor comes and you're like, like well, well, to do, do to even be in the running, running he, has he has to top, top it. it. <laughs> no, it's like, it's, it's yeah, sure. Like, well, I, 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 I don't think know. so. Yeah, straight like you're, to be to be fair, like this was one of the events where I didn't have a horse in the race at all, right? Like I'm, I'd be happy for any of these guys winning this sure. one. I don't have a particular emotional connection. Maybe Sasha because he's a hometown guy, but uh, I think I would feel that strongly if Sean was in the finals, because then his entire climb, I'm hoping, like man, I hope he like you got to make every move, and when he gets to the top, that then that would be like a a really tense five moment or five minutes or whatever. Um, but in this particular event, I think just because like we saw a top what on the very second climber to come out, like Yufei Pen, was he the seventh ranked? Anyway. Magos, Magos was second and he topped it. But even Meiji got to the last right. move yeah. so, as the first climber. So yeah. it's like even even though Meiji didn't top it as the first climber, right away we knew well this thing is toppable. Yeah, and I think that's why I kind of checked out was uh, it at that kind of thing just. And maybe it's because we're not just spectators like we are. We have been kind of watching it for a while. And and you, first of all, we know what the pain feels like for the root setters, right? Like I've, I've never head set a competition, but I have sat beside head root setters as they go through all of those phases and, you know, completely clam up and get quiet or have to go to the washroom and start puking for some of the, like, that's a really rough moment. It, uh, it's, it's not fun. So shout out to Adam Pustelnik, like, one of the best root setters in the world, according to the IFSC, and even sometimes it doesn't go well. Which we might as well talk about this. Although we should finish up with the with the women's side. Well, uh, well, I'll say this <clears throat> while you're queuing that up. I yeah. It's too bad that there were so many tops because, I, and you echoed this as well. I actually really liked the route in the men's final. I thought the route was really cool. It had two, if I remember correctly, it had two dynamic. Uh, uh, sections. sections. It had this it had one section where you had to do what they were calling like the Superman, Superman jump, like a one-handed, one-handed thing, which which, which yeah. didn't seem to give any competitors any trouble, but it was nonetheless aesthetically it was a really cool really move, really, really fun, fun to watch. watch. Uh, uh, so I liked the route, the route overall. I thought it was it was uh, it was fun to watch. It's just unfortunate that from a competitive standpoint that there were so many tops. Yeah, and from the women's side, this is I'm Mori. Uh, and she's about to get up to the the uh, crux section for the women. So for the women, it was about, I guess, like two-thirds of the way up. Uh, and it was, I guess, intended to be a move where you have to throw with your right hand, you cut all points, and then you ninja kick into the wall to uh, to stop your swing. I probably should have queued this up a few seconds longer. 
it was the 30 going from hold 35 to 36 yeah uh, 36 is on the blue volume there and that's where it, that's the move that everybody yeah or most of them could not hold there was quite the bottleneck there at, the, at 35 plus yeah it was uh it was a tough one to watch um seeing so many people fall going dynamic or seeing some climbers trying to static it like desperately and not being able to make it happen um yeah that's that's I don't know. This one was tough. Again, like it was really only Yanya that managed to crack it and she made it look incredible. And I'll just try and find her where she was in this section. Ba, 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 ba. Almost there. Yeah, there we go. So anyway, and she just cruises this particular move, like just doesn't have to do the beta at all. Makes it look unreal. Uh, but then very shortly after it just gets a little too, uh, a little too hard um yeah so like again it was just two routes where it really came down to just one point on each climb nothing before that crux section seemed to be like i wasn't actually worried if any of the climbers were going to make it that far so i don't know it this finals left uh left me wanting a lot more unfortunately yeah, although seeing year. yanya top this would have been sick so anyway this was the parallel i was talking to maringen of earlier this year where we saw the boys on problem number one trying to figure out that crack move right you see every single climber just failing 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 on the crack problem and then finally the last climber comes out breaks it gets a top incredible moment it would have been amazing here if yanya had managed to actually top it she didn't but she did crack the move um but it didn't have the same magic maybe because we had just watched the men's where the bottleneck was the top and then we watched again where the women's where they had a bottleneck as well um so it just didn't didn't quite go for me didn't have yeah. the same feeling even though it was a similar setup but and and, and speaking of mayring and we should note that uh, adam Andre was not in this competition because he's yeah. he's been injured and and we didn't really even talk that much about jane kim's injury we mentioned it briefly but uh you're, you're, you're starting, starting to see, to see I, remember I remember hearing competitors talk, talk about this, how they were nervous that, that as everybody kind of jumps head first into every discipline, discipline uh, that, that just opens, opens up the, the door the for either overtraining or injuries. injuries. And, and um, I, don't I don't know if that's, that's the case with Jane, Jane Kim or, or with Adam Andra, but, but nonetheless, nonetheless, you have sure. two, two elite two level, level um, t very top level lead climbers that are both, that are both injured. I think like, uh, I think the one thing that I wish existed to help us talk about this kind of issue is having, um, cause really like we learn about people being injured mostly from their own Instagrams, right? Like mm -hmm. there isn't, uh, like an industry, you know, if, if you wanted to talk about injured players or bent players that were on the bench in other sports, that would be covered by the league that would be covered by the news outlets and things like that. And it doesn't really become, uh, like you would never get an article in climbing about, Jane Kim tweaking her finger and being out for a few rounds, right? Like that doesn't happen. Miho was out for like like many months and you, there wasn't an article explicitly about that. Nobody follows up to find out exactly what's going on. They don't do interviews with the climber about it. They don't do interviews with their like team doctor or things like that. So it's, it's fairly hard to keep track of all these things. It would be great if there was more information generally in the scene to find out like, hey, is it like an overuse injury? Is it something that you've been fighting with for years and years? Um, so I, it's, it is a little bit hard to say whether or not it's something that's because of the increased load on climbers, although that's obviously something that can uh, like be a huge contributing factor. Um, but yeah, I don't know, like, I don't even know what to say about Jane's injury because, you know, it's, it's unfortunate it happened on the second qualifier. She did so great in the first one that it didn't matter. She was invited to semifinals, but she like she obviously opted against it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a bit of a bummer, but I don't know. It's um, maybe she would have been in finals. Andra probably would have been in finals. At the same time, I can see somebody like him getting you know baffled by some of the movement in that bouldery section on the semifinals. You never know. Like there have yeah. been times in the boulder season where he just didn't put something together. So it's hard to say. Hopefully they come back towards the end um, and we'll see more of them. It's, it's just, just unfortunate. unfortunate. You, you, we would not, not want to see, see anybody's, anybody's season over or damaged, damaged because of injury, of course. Of course but then especially, especially we don't want to see anybody's, anybody's Olympic, Olympic push, Olympic, Olympic hopes, hopes dashed because of an injury that's that's just such a especially if it's somebody like adam Andre or jane kim who you very you know you certainly expect to be in the running for their country as an olympian so hopefully both of them heal up really quickly and they might i don't know you know they might be back next this coming week at chamonix who knows
Yeah. Um, okay, I'm just looking through my notes because we'll probably wrap it yeah. up soon unless you have anything uh, to talk about. One one was, and this is just, a, we won't talk too much about this. If you do watch the replay of the Speed Finals, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Mike Langley and the crew because they finally did do a little... Um, like a, I don't want to call it a mini documentary, but they did like a little five minute video on the Tomoa or the Reza skip. Um, it gave some good info for for newer viewers who haven't seen what those are. Um, Dimitri Timofeev, like some of his language is, you know, not it doesn't always translate. So for like a really technical issue, like maybe he wasn't exactly the guy to get for it. Although he, I love watching him on camera because he's such like a goofy dude. Um, but that was a, a cool little thing that I wanted to throw a shout out for. And I just like just Mike Langley for doing a good job through the entire yeah. event. Um, and what was the other thing I, uh, I noted down? was in the finals and i just wanted to make sure that this was reflected in the scores kokoro fuji so we were talking mm. about how high kokoro got in yes. the uh in the thing and when you look at his scores he is ranked eighth with a with a score of eight it sounds like he did step on a bolt uh right down at the bottom and i haven't actually looked for a video of this so we're just going to do this together everybody we're gonna oh they they they, 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 they didn't give him the 39, 39 plus no they dropped him way down uh hmm. because of a, a bolt step i'm trying to find him in the uh in the running here this is this is this breaking is, news this to is me. the shoddiest episode so far let me display capture this thing so it should be soon so the crack if you oh sorry i should actually show the display capture here we go so only a few holds up, they had like a so-called crack. It was like, you know, the volumes kind of formed a crack feature, but you didn't climb it like a crack. It had some holds inside it. And so I just want to see if you can actually see it on camera where he steps on this thing. So that's a crack up there. And we'll keep an eye out. There's note that there is a bolt under the blue volume. You can see it just uh, while well, it's behind his body right now. But let's see if we can spot. Uh, oh, that might be it right there. His well, right foot. It's hard foot. to see really hard to see oh yeah yeah, 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 his yeah, yeah. okay uh, so that's it well we'll go back a little oh i went too far i went too far yeah we yeah, can we maybe, maybe do slow-mo slow here that's, well let me see if i can pull it off playback speed actually i'll cut it down when we get closer to the thing yeah, yeah. but uh well, yes this is, this, this is big news i did not know this um because after the competition the results that were posted i did i did not see this indicated so. really that's so okay check right here right here or sorry there's my cursor there's a little bolt right here you can see where my cursor is his foot boom right there. on it there so i think mike mentioned in the playback uh that there was an appeal going on and uh i can't remember if he's the one that mentioned it or if i saw it in somebody's instagram post or a tweet or something but uh anyway uh, that's too bad how i noted it oh you know what i let me see here Oh, my computer is really slow. I think I did note it in my in my results when I was when I was looking at it. Okay. Because uh -huh. I was gonna say if this was the second time this season where results were published incorrectly, like after anyway, I'm not gonna get yeah. into that whole thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna check here since we're going with the theme of <laughs> shoddy episode. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see here. Recap. Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah. He got eighth. Huh. huh. Interesting. Interesting. I didn't, I didn't even realize, realize it. it. I, 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 I didn't, didn't even realize it when I was looking at the results. results. Um, so, so I'm glad, so you, glad brought you brought it up. it up. Yeah. Anyway, so bolts yeah. aren't footholds, kids. Yeah. yeah. That's all. That's too bad because have. he clearly, like, like, like sometimes, sometimes when competitors, competitors do that, you see, see them instantly, instantly realize, realize what they've done and they're kind of like, oh, you know. But it looks like he didn't. It just didn't even register that he did it. So it's too bad. That must. It's. It's almost like it's probably like extra heartbreaking because it's like. When you know that you did it, then you're like, there's an appeal. But when you don't even realize that you did it, and then somebody tells you that there's a technical appeal, it's like, oh, come yeah. on. And, and like, in fairness, maybe the officials pointed it out to the athletes. Obviously, the bolt was there in preview, so you can see it. But as you're going through preview, you're not really thinking about your surroundings. You're thinking about the stuff you're going to be climbing on. And in that position, the bolt might have been out of view. It might have just felt like a hole. But I, I still think bolts on the wall, that's one of my most, like, biggest pet peeves of, of lead climbing is how many bolts are left on the wall so close to the climbing area. Um, 
and they just become like obstacles. I did a whole video, just like a very boring, I think it was like 20 minute video on obstacles in the field. And the, the bolts thing drives me crazy. It's just like such an un, I get the technical part of it. Like often on walls, uh, bolts uh, or like hangers are attached with a bolt and that bolt is actually structural as well. It's used to connect the panel to the superstructure. That's really common in a lot of, of current wall uh, builds. Um, but it's the kind of thing you just don't want there. It's just like a hazard for no reason, right? So, yeah, kind yeah of. and science, science. I remember that video that you did, uh, the hazards in the field of play. And well, yeah, because that was the black also. diamond uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, situation, yeah, where they had a, a sign that ended up getting stepped on. And, and that situation had its own, like, uh, uh, sub-issues and stuff. I think it wasn't present in the preview, and that, that was really what the... Uh, the complaint ended up being about is that the yeah, the field yeah. of play changed between the preview video and the and the climb. But anyway, um, just to go through the the technicalities of it, moment of the comp. What was the big one for you? I loved I Sasha Lehman winning in his home country, but I think for me, just the oddity of Yanya losing her chalk bag and still topping the round sure, probably yeah. probably <laughs> takes the cake. That was um, that was just. Uh, it just added some extra drama to to the whole Yanya saga yeah. so the ongoing, ongoing saga, saga of yanya and and, and she, she proved that she doesn't she doesn't even need chalk she'll, she'll still win, win you know yeah. so that was the favorite moment of, for me was yanya losing her chalk bag and still topping for me it is either the surprise of chai hyun seo doing so well mm. in semifinals which i only saw like literally an hour ago i woke up early and in bed i rewatched semifinals just to just to make sure i was up to speed on that but the other one that i like that i got to watch as it happened, that actually felt fun because finals didn't feel fun to watch. But in the speed finals, that final race for the men uh, between Dimitri and Alexander, where they were head to head the entire time. And it wasn't until the very last second that Dimitri had that slip. That was where I was like, both of these people are pushing their limits head to head yeah, the yeah. entire time. That, and again, it was five seconds, but it was a really good five seconds. So I think that's my... Uh, um, my uh, my top moment, and then I, 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 th I think we're gonna get a, a men's record world record broken this this season you for the so? speed climbing. I think really? so. They, I think what was the there were men that were I can't remember what the winning times were. I don't have them here. They got but, really um, close. Um, they were really close. Let me and and, and we were just talking about how conditions were were bad or suboptimal, and so if they're that close on poor conditions. Then I think, I think it's, it's it's not, not out, out of the question, question to say that if if the conditions are better, uh, we, might we might see a world record, record broken for the men. men. Yeah. So the the best speed in the entire event uh, for men was a five point five one three by Dmitry Timofeev in semifinals. Yeah. Um, and that is that's obviously like very very close. That's what point. The world record zero, is 5.3. Yeah, it's basically 0 .03 so, off the world record. So yeah. that like incredible run right there. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I it's it's hard to say. I think um I I've been it's gonna, probably going to be way too much work, but I've been thinking about graphing average speeds of athletes over time. So like average all of their runs in a single event and just kind of like start charting that out and see if you can like find if you could um because the like breaking a world record is always going to be an aberration, right? It's always going to happen far before that becomes an average speed for climbers. But I'm starting to wonder if there becomes like a like a predictability window where you say, okay, these people are getting you know this close to the old world uh, world record. Like like most climbers on average are 0.5 of a second away from the old uh, world record. That means like we're probably going to see one soon. I'm curious if that kind of like predictability exists. Yeah, I'd yeah, love, I'd to, love see to see it if you if you end up doing a video like that. I think that'd be really fascinating. Um, Who knows? Because, yeah, guys are getting close. They're really close to that 5.4. I mean, 5.48 is almost 5.5, you know, and and guys are running 5.5. So it's like, like consistently running 5.5. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Yep, could happen soon. Uh, and then do you want to give a grade to this event? Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a. <laughs> this is like this was the thing when we started doing these debriefs. I was like, oh, this would be a great part. We give a grade, we'll argue about it. This has become my least favorite part of the show because it's so hard to grade these things compared to each other. It is, and it's hard to grade. It's hard to loop the men's and the women's together yeah. for one grade. But nonetheless, it was one. Villars is one weekend package, so we'll grade it as one. Uh, maybe a B, B minus, maybe. Right. Uh, I, I would be very hard pressed to put it in in the A category just with so many tops. 
But nonetheless, it's, I don't think it deserves a C because there was still some excitement, Sasha winning, the drama with Yanya's chalk bag. So I'd, I'd put it right in between a B minus and a B. Yeah, I think um, I need to like figure. So through most of the bouldering World Cups, the events were good, right? They were good or average. And then one of them, in my opinion, was great. This was an event that was like subpar. It was an event where I didn't enjoy myself for most of it. So I wouldn't be surprised if I'm like B minus, maybe a C territory. Like I could feel myself in there. So I I don't know if I want to give like a, you know, yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, this is a C minus. The finals wow. sucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Finals okay. genuinely was garbage. Um, mm-hmm. It wasn't fun for me at any point. The speed was the was the thing and that my yeah my favorite part was a, a single particular speed run and um and out of nowhere new climber who looks really talented but that's not to the event's credit yeah yeah, yeah, yeah I, I i you make, you a, make compelling a compelling case, case. I, I, I it was, it was not, not it was it was, it was definitely, definitely not um the ideal, ideal way, way to, to, kick to kick off the lead season, season for, for as, as a, a fan, fan as, as just, just a fan wanting consistent excitement, excitement and drama, drama. um but Maybe we'll go, you know, <laughs> there's nowhere to go. I don't want to say there's nowhere to go but up because it wasn't it wasn't that bad. We, yeah. Hey, at least we're not dealing with one of the things we have not dealt with, had to deal with this year, like we have in years past, is just like terrible stream quality. So whatever the IFSC is, has been doing this year um, in terms of making sure the stream is, is consistent and is good, good for them. Because that, 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 that that's like the thing that frustrates me the most when I just – when, when the stream, the stream goes, goes bad, bad uh, uh, or the or, or something, something, and I'm just sitting there. Before like, I let you give them too much credit, I thought I so I didn't watch semifinals live, but I thought yeah. I saw a tweet from the IFSC account saying, "We know the stream is down right now. We're working to fix it." Uh-oh. So whatever, <laughs> maybe take back. Uh-oh. I don't actually okay. know what happened. The replay is obviously good quality and stuff, but maybe the stream was actually kind of crap. I don't know. I I'm yeah, not yeah. gonna. But uh, I think I saw that they got a new broadcast truck. The company that does the production, they've got. A, a van now or a, a mobile truck. I, I don't know if they're going to take that to like Asian events or North American events. Um, yeah. They might still do like a mobile setup, but uh, that's kind of cool. I don't know. It's definitely yeah, I mean, worth it's, spending money on your internet infrastructure when you're doing a live broadcast. It is. It is. And, and, and the, the events, events that in the past have always been problematic are the China, China events because mm-hmm. of the, the internet, internet there. there. And, and this, this year and the bouldering season, season Chongqing and, and, and Wujang, they, they, were they were smooth. So, were so, um, so, so I, a, little a little bit of technical, technical difficulties, difficulties isn't, isn't – I don't, I don't – that, that doesn't bother me as much. much. We've had We've events had in years past where like every round, every – it's, it's, it's like, like it's, it's all terrible. terrible. There have been times when I've, I've just been like, I can't even watch this, you know? Yeah. And so let me bring back a thing. So the IFSC doesn't allow the chat room anymore on YouTube, right? Which drives me crazy because I don't think there's any reason you can't just hire some like teenager, not even hire, just like get a volunteer kid to act as your chat moderator like every other live event does, especially in, you know, like the, the video game world where every community has chat moderators. They might be paid, they might get like free stuff or they might just be part of the community and they care about it. You put one person in whose job it is to ban or delete messages, it's not that hard. This isn't a particularly high viewer, high activity stream. It's not Twitch chat where you have like, you know, 60 comments coming per second or something. I want that chat stream back, but I I feel like part of the reason they probably got rid of it must have been because the streams were so shite for a long time that yeah. it would just be a people constantly, you know, just like dumping garbage on them for that. Maybe not. Like the internet's full of terrible people and there seem to be a lot of adults that run the IFSC and adults often don't understand that kids on the internet are just trying to bother other people. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I think actually that's not why I came into this conversation. But yeah, just get get the IFSC to have some chat moderators. There, I, yeah, I'm couple, almost yeah, about yeah. to volunteer for it, but then I have to be awake at the time that the broadcasts happen, which could be tough sometimes. <laughs> there's, a there's a couple of things that I've that thought, thought that the IFSC would be really cool if they would do. Would do starting, starting the chats chat again would be one, one thing. thing. Um, um, in, in terms of building community, community and kind of fostering, fostering this community, community of comp, comp fans, fans the, the, the chat, chat thing, um, I've, I've also thought, thought like they, they I, I've, I've always been perplexed, perplexed that they don't, they don't sell IFSC, IFSC merchandise, merchandise to just uh, uh, to just, just get, get the, the brand, brand out, out there, there more. more. Um, I, I, just I just think, think that there are these little things that that they could do that other organizations do 
um, that I just think would would kind of help it feel more like a just a community of fans. Yeah, I think the chat thing would be a really big deal. That by itself, I don't know if I'd buy IFSC merch, but I definitely do want like a pair of shoes with like Yanya's face on them. Well, I don't know if I'd buy the merch, but somebody would, and it'd be cool. Well, that's a whole other discussion. The the yeah, that would be. I want yeah, I want shirts of the top competitors. I want a Yanya shirt. Um, I think, I think people, people would get into that. that. Yeah, like but, get like, these get these athletes with brands with like legit lifestyle brands. It'll be yeah, sick. Yeah. Anyway, we should just cut this because we're just talking about nothing at this point. <laughs> All right, so that was the first lead World Cup of <laughs> of the season. We're gonna be back next week with Chamonix, which I'm really excited about because I really like that wall and it's one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Although apparently it's really touristy now. It's like lost all of its authentic charm, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, we're going to uh, uh, Chamonix for another lead and speed World Cup. We're getting close to the end of the speed season. Um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be great. So if you're looking forward to that next one, and I promise I will watch it on time and I'll have more clips ready and you won't have to watch me scroll through video live, uh, leave a subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment. I probably won't read it. John definitely will. Uh, etc. Anyway, have a great week. Climb hard. We'll see you guys uh, next week on The Debrief.